years later is a series where I take a look back on past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 or more years older still hold up. Today's episode will be on The Stepfather. It was released on January 23rd, 1987. So, does it hold up? What year is it? Whoa, what? <gasps> Thursday. What year? No, what year is it? So I have heard of this franchise before, the Stepfather franchise, only the first one. I did not know that there was going to be like two sequels and a remake. When I researched for years later, I was like, okay, this is going to be a cool years later episode. But then upon more research, wait a minute, there's three other movies. I guess this is a years later and franchise video as well. And it is an interesting series about having step parents. There's probably a lot of kids, a lot of people who have step parents, and then they have to get along with their stepmother or father. The first one takes that, flips it, let's make it creepy. There is something menacing and creepy about Jerry, about this movie movie him joining into a family being a stepfather to a kid or whatever loving this woman and then by the end killing that family changing his identity and looks going to another family and doing it all over again something about that is sick and twisted they leave it like okay you know what this guy just kind of messed up in the head leave it at that moments in this movie where he's like back in my day back when i was a kid and i didn't know whether to trust him or not because he could be lying he's essentially a con artist but to an extreme level of having a relationship with the family one and then killing them treats it kind of like a game and all this works because of the actor don't know the name because forgot it the actor seems like a nice person he just seems like a nice upper middle class man who seems nice he wants to take care of his family he's conning his way through the film opens up with him cleaning up changing his looks and whatnot while it just pans into the family all dead on the floor and whatnot him walking out whistling as if everything's all good that's off a tone of like this guy's creepy any single mother that he meets to them it's charming he does play like the whole sympathy card but i guess they just fall for it and then you have two other stories going on first one is jim he he is the brother to the older sister or sister that died in the opening and so he was already suspicious of jerry and throughout the i'm trying to catch up to him trying to find out his new identity where he lives his new town roadmaps talking to officers we need to catch this guy he's dangerous and he has a reason to go after him wants revenge the only issue with this is that once he does confront him he gets stabbed it feels like there's this build up and then all of a sudden nothing happens it's just like you got stabbed could also argue that's how you know menacing and good jerry is but i don't know man all this build up it felt like waste of time feels like it was there to extend the runtime to an hour 30 minutes an hour 20 minutes 90 minutes was a bit disappointing and then the girl and daughter stephanie now she's the one that's like right off the bat this jerry guy he is suspicious as hell he's way too nice he gives these dirty ass looks she even sees him like rage out he has these like impulsive rages and violent tendencies and so she sees all of this gets in a fight with one girl at school she gets expelled and there are scenes of her and his boyfriend which i didn't care for at all but it was also there for jerry to see and get involved and be like i don't like this he's being very controlling over stephanie eventually he does win her over to an extent but in the end she is the one that stabs him and kills him but she is the one questioning him questioning everyone around her being like yeah this guy's uh suspicious there was at no point where i thought jerry wanted a family i mean there are glimpses of that once he's with stephanie and his new wife he goes on to a new identity and starts another family but i don't know if the film didn't do this correct or i just didn't feel it but i didn't feel like he wanted a family this is just his like thing his niche of like addiction of messing up a family family essentially just ruining a happy person's life being a mom and a kid there's a no point where i felt that he truly cared about being a father being a family man having a wife having a family once they all find out the wife fights back here and there stephanie fights back stephanie is the one to stab him in his heart with a knife okay that's very important because in the later movies somehow he survives this but in this movie he is completely dead doesn't come back they end off with him down the stairs knife in his heart he is dead totally dead and so in the end the stepfather 35 years later it's still a good movie still like this movie i don't think it's great i think it has a potential to be great i do feel that this movie should have been more of a thriller i mean it's horror but it's more thriller based more tension building of like the father doing these you know weird things he seems nice on the outside but then slowly the family figures out hey this guy's a bit creepy or he's weird i wish there was more of this escalation of tension and then in the end trying to kill him and that's what this movie was i just think it was done kind of all right but with what we got the stepfather is still a damn good movie so the two sequels now here's the thing whenever i do franchise videos or talk about it i usually have individual timestamps for each movie and this one the two sequels i'm gonna have it in one timestamp section because they are the same movie it's a rinse or repeat of the same thing with you know different things here and there so in the second movie again somehow he survives he's like i don't know an alien or michael myers or some shit even jason Voorhees, he's some kind of zombie or supernatural being but it's really not but whatever getting over that he's back somehow he's in a insane asylum he's talking to 
to this one doctor and this other cop guy but they do bring up interesting points of why does he do this and still in this movie they leave it unknown just to be like we're not gonna explain it he just does this because he does it's his thing he gets a new identity and meets another woman who is also single and it repeats and that's kind of an issue it's not bad it's more like this is two years later after the first movie and instead of doing something new or having a new stepfather actor they do a repeat and that to me is always lazy just do something different and instead in this one it's more like you know let's just redo what was successful you know it works but i just don't really like it because it's lazy and this one i think person that's suspicious of jerry is the boy again this lady this single mother has a boy and again he goes around killing these other people because it's his kick or whatever but unlike the first one there's a wedding relationship evolves into just being boyfriend girlfriend into actually having a wedding so they're at this church having an actual wedding there is one memorable death of him hanging her friend in the laundry room she too is also suspicious of jerry she goes in the laundry room gets hung it is a creepy ass image of her laying there it's obviously kind of done poorly but whatever it still works at this wedding the mother realizes that hey you know what this guy's evil because of this bottle one of her friend's house and she just died like a couple days ago it's this big fight there's blood involved whole table crash slamming her into a table and then the boy has to kill him with a hammer and once again the hammer goes right into his heart killing him and that's how the movie ends of the last shot of him dead and then her going out all blooded up people helping her being like what happened but guess what there's a third movie and somehow they're gonna explain that that hammer in his heart was not able to kill him somehow so in the third one guess what he survives he's in like this rainy area thing goes to this underground illegal surgeon thing i thought this is gonna be like a different timeline or different person but no it's still jerry it's the same person but the actor they don't want to come back so they had to find somewhere to be like, okay let's have this continue with a different face and then they go with plastic surgery so now he has a new face kills his doctor because he now knows they want to live a new life new identity taking it literally now because he has a new face and i do like this new actor he does have the same mannerisms as the previous actor so this third one is different there's a new face and a longer runtime which isn't a good thing same thing it's lazy only difference is the face so this one has a kid that's handicapped and there is one scene where i don't know whether to laugh or to be like yikes this has an aged well where he's trying to tell this kid who's in a wheelchair to stand up and play football and catch and he's clearly just like handicapped he's not able to walk and he's pissed off that he can't walk and so he yells at him just to walk and stand up and i both laughed and also was like yikes is this supposed to be offensive nowadays i really don't know i don't think that scene really aged that well at all because it is just like oh okay this is uh this is not good and then that's all i really remembered from this movie wheelchair kid help from another woman a new face oh i guess the whistle continues with the new face and different voice again how that works no idea but i'm just gonna go with it because why not i don't remember much from this movie at all i guess he does die technically officially if there's another movie then he wouldn't be but this one's like guess what he got like shredded into like pieces i think he is dead for all these two movies they're okay they are redoing things that are done you know just kind of better the first time but they're not bad movies they're okay it's the same movie with a different face or different environment or different start it's just all kind of the same And then the remake, which I do like. So you have Sam Lane from Superman and Lois being the stepfather. The film opens up the same way with different angles and whatnot. But the slight difference is that he's a bit more aggressive and more kind of physical with the kid. Well, mainly the boy, but there's like the older son who's a soldier or who's back from the military. You have the youngest brother and then a girl, I think. I think he has a daughter. And you have additional characters just to kill him off as well. Like that one lady friend or whatever. She's there to die in that pool, drown in that pool. Amber Heard is there as well, I think, for for reasons that I don't remember but she's there and it plays out the same way that any other film would in this series where there's one person that doesn't trust him in this case it's the older brother and his father his real father who's jealous that his wife got a new boyfriend he does bring up some you know good points of why would you let this stranger inside your house after months or whatever like it's pretty quick you don't just bring in a stranger who you know from like the supermarket or whatever and then have him be a part of your family six months in I do think that's too fast but it also looks bad on him because he just divorced this lady so no one really believes him except for the older son he is the one that's first off like yeah you are you know you're suspicious and he would be right now in terms of the actual stepfather i think there's just something about the original that's just more creepy this one is my second favorite mainly because i know him from superman and lois but again that aggression and physical attack on that young boy whenever he plays video games and doesn't turn it down he grabs him by the back of his neck aggressively not yelling at him but aggressively just telling him lower down a goddamn volume his mannerisms are clearly different 
and they're good for this modern take but that original film of just this nice looking guy he's just creepy and this guy is creepy as well it just seems like he's not subtle about it he's a bit more upfront about it when no one's around or lightly looking that old lady i thought that would be nothing gives this dirty look like what the hell was that turns out it would be for good reason because this old lady's probably suspicious of him as well and because they show the kills in the original they don't really show them but in this one you actually see them him choking out this old ass lady she can't really defend herself and like with the original and i guess all the films i never get the feeling of him wanting to be a parent a father being a stepfather having a family i never get that feeling at all i always go back to him just being in this niche of having this thrill of being a part of this family being cool with them and in the end killing them that's what gets him i guess going never got the feeling once that he really and truly wants to be a family man whatsoever they have a better end fight where they like fall through this wood patio thing that was actually pretty cool but it is end off fading the black wakes up in a hospital and guess what jerry or not jerry grady he survives he has longer hair now no like i think still shaved meets another woman with you know kids who is a single parent the sympathy card thing and does it all over again i guess they did that to continue the whole he can survive anything because you know he's a supernatural being or whatever but the remake is good i like it modern take but it's still the same story same kind of way to start have the conflict and end and that was it for the stepfather franchise it's an entertaining series to go through if i were to rank them last would be the second one and then third would be the third one second would be the remake and the first one the original still the best having a step parent come into your life having to adjust to that and in these movies they flip that of being like guess what if your father or stepmother was crazy and they were a killer and whatnot so i do like that some people having a step parent is a nightmare probably where this came from or it actually was inspired by some real life murderer so that's it for me this has been the road so far and thank you you for watching.